Have you ever wondered how you can get information about classes dynamically at runtime instead of having to know about it all at compile time? My name is Nick Cosentino and I'm a principal software engineering manager at Microsoft. In this video, I'm going to take a beginner focus on working with reflection in C Sharp to do just that. We're going to look at some code examples that allow us to inspect some types in C Sharp and see what we can do from there. Just a quick reminder to check that pinned comment for a link to my newsletter and my courses on Dome Train. Let's head over to Visual Studio. So in order to demonstrate some things that we can do with reflection in C Sharp, we need to have a class that we want to work with. What I've done is I've created just a really simple dummy class that we can play around with. There's not really any purpose to this, so please don't read into what it's doing. I just wanted to have a couple of variations of things so we can see how it all ties together. So I've just made a new class and then I've provided two different constructors on here. And that's so that we can go look at different constructor information using reflection. We can see how they differ from each other once we start to inspect those constructors. In the first example, we're just providing some default values and then chaining it into this constructor here that's defined from line 40 to 42. And then we end up setting those values right onto these properties. And those properties are defined right here. So we have two public properties. One's an integer property, one's a string property. And then I've also added on this method. And it doesn't do anything because that's not the point of this particular video. I just want us to be able to look at what we're able to get when we inspect these things with reflection. And I've said reflection a couple of times so far. I'm assuming that if you clicked on this video, you probably had some idea what reflection is. But just a quick note that if you're not familiar with reflection, it is the capability that we have in C Sharp to be able to investigate type information at runtime. Now, C Sharp is a language that we have all of this type safety built into. So it's really difficult to write code where the types don't really line up because a lot of the time the compiler can say, hey, you can't do that. And it stops us before we can even compile. And that means we don't run into some of these issues at runtime. Of course, there are cases where we can cast things incorrectly and all that sort of thing. But a lot of the time, the compiler is really able to assist us. But that means that we need to know that information up front at compile time. And if there's situations where you want to investigate types, work with types at runtime, and you don't have all of this information from ahead of time, or you want to do things more dynamically, reflection can help with that. Let's head back to the code. All right, there is a lot more code on my screen now, but it follows a very similar pattern. So please don't be totally taken back by this. What we're going to be doing is looking at constructors, properties, and methods on a particular type. So what I wanted to show you is that I'm going to be, let's just start with the constructors at the very top here. So I'll collapse these other ones. We're just gonna be looking at this part for now, because as I walk you through this, the other two sort of blocks of code that we just saw, those are very much the same. So what I'm doing is just gonna be printing out to the console so we have some you know some space that we can see what's going on and then using reflection I'm saying type of and then my class so we have this syntax that we can use here to ask for the type of my class so without that we can't just write this code like my class dot because this would be expecting a static method that's on the type my class which doesn't exist but when we do this this is getting an instance of a type object so this is a type object and then we're asking that type object to be able to get the constructors now once we have a list of the constructors what we're able to do and this is just a little bit more verbose uh, link that i have here just because i want to be able to easily print out the information really all that i'm doing is asking for each constructor um i used <laughs> just used a for each loop instead of a, a for loop and counted through it. But that's really all that this is doing is I'm getting an instance of the constructor along with the index. So that's why it looks a little bit more verbose here. Now this console write line is just going to print out the name of the constructor. And then from there, what I wanted to be able to do is print out the parameter information of the constructors. And that's because we saw on my class, I defined two different constructors. So if you were interested in inspecting a type and seeing what's different between the constructors, you could use this type of behavior. Next, we're going to look at properties. And like I said, this is going to be almost the exact same thing, but instead of getting constructors, we'll just ask for the properties. So this part here is still getting the type of my class. So we get a type object back. This is that verbose link again, that's just going to be getting an instance of the property information along with the index. And then I'm just going to print that out here. So we'll get the property name along with the type 
of the property that we have. So we should see something about an integer property and something about a string property, because those are the two properties that I have. And finally, we're going to look at methods, and this is almost the exact same thing, so it should look very familiar. This part here is different, so we're asking for the methods instead of the properties, and then from there what we're doing is printing out the method names and then having the different parameters that we have available into those methods provided here as well. Now I didn't add any parameters onto these methods, so let me go add one more and we'll provide it some parameters. Okay, now we have some variations of these things and we have this big block of code up at the top here. It's going to print this information out for us. Again, the reflection parts are really the parts that we're using after we get the instance of the type. So get constructors, get properties, and get methods. Let's go run this and see what we get. Okay, so there's a ton of output on my screen. This is just for a simple class as well. But if we start with the constructors, recall that we have two constructors, right? One had no parameters, and that's going to be the first one because we see constructor zero. The name is .ctor, so this is just the built-in name because we don't name the constructors, right? The constructor names to us look like just the type, but this is the name of the method behind the scenes that is the constructor. But then there's no parameters for the first constructor, and that's one of the two constructors we had so that checks out the second one also has the same name right it's kind of interesting they don't give the constructors unique names or anything like that and then the parameters that we have there were two there was a numeric one and a string one and internally within that constructor we were assigning these to the properties speaking of properties that's the next part we have here so nothing really fancy going on here but we get both property names and then we can see that one is an integer and one is a string so this is what i would expect the methods part gets a little bit more interesting because you just saw me add a second method on there why the heck are there nine methods on this class there's literally only two and you saw me write the second one right before running this. So many beginners don't realize this, but properties are technically just syntactic sugar for methods that are getters and setters. And we can see that very clearly here. So method zero is the getter for numeric property. And this is literally a method that exists. It's called get underscore numeric property. That is a method we have access to and same with set. And you'll see that the set numeric property takes in a value because it's a setter and that's of integer type. And then we have the same thing for the string. So these four methods together are really just the properties that we declared. Next, you'll see method four, which is the one that I created in the beginning called my method. There's no parameters on this one, so there's no extra information to add on to it. And you can see method five is right below right here. That's the one that I just added before running this code. And you can see that it has some number and some string. Those are the two parameter names I made. One's an integer and one's a string. So. That all checks out. It's kind of cool that we can see all that information. But then there's four more properties, right? And these technically come from the base class because every class is technically an object. So get type, to string, the equals method, and get hash code are things that are all going to be available on every class. So even though you didn't see me go define these on that class, and technically you didn't see me define these exactly as they're written here on that class, these are all methods that technically exist in the compiled code. And that's just a quick primer on how we can use reflection to go examine some type information on C-sharp types. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, that's kind of cool. I can see maybe some use cases for that, but wouldn't it be extra cool if we could see other things that we weren't supposed to have access Access to and you're totally right that would be awesome so you should check out this video next thanks and I'll see you next time